by his uh, by the fruits you shall know them, right? So you have to know what his fruitage is, what he is compared to, his many names, the stories of. He's always doing the same type of thing. You'll see the story of him trying to um, overthrow his father's throne um, everywhere. He always leaves his mark somewhere. It's like a dog; it just pees everywhere. He always leaves his trace. He has to. He has no other choice. It's even in the planet Saturn as compared to the sun. It's right there. Okay, there's a story of Saturn's rings. All right, and if you if you understand the con the story of Lucifer trying to overthrow his father, right, and his father and his angels, his sons, okay, sons of God, kicked him out of heaven. Well, look at Saturn. It's got rings going around it. Well, what are those rings? It's just dust. It's stardust. Okay, Saturn's not a planet. It's a um, dwarf uh, star. It's a dwarf star. So it's the only dwarf star in the solar system. Now, in uh, theology and mythology, Saturn is associated with Kronos and Satan and the devil and uh, Father Time, the Grim Reaper. And the sun is associated with the Father in heaven, God. Why? Because all the planets go around him. He's the boss, right? The other planet that is associated with God is Jupiter. That's the son of God. That's Jesus, right next to Saturn. <clears throat> okay? So Saturn's got rings going around it, right? Well, if you look at that, well, so what is what is Saturn? Look at Saturn. It's a it's a fallen, failed uh, star. It was like trying. It's like if you look at it it's, it, it, it's a dwarf star. So what does that mean? It means it tried to become a, a, star, a star and it didn't. It couldn't. Saturn is associated with the cube, the Kaaba, um, the black hex, the curse, the prison cell, time. You know, Pandora's box, the box, right? Like the jack in the box, you know. Um, why? Because Saturn is the Grim Reaper. Well, wouldn't you know in astrology that Saturn rules the bones in the human body? Saturn rules the bones, the most dense form of the human beings, the most compact and dense. The element and metal of Saturn is lead, like Led Zeppelin. You know the band? You can see the big balloon in the sky, and it's got the fallen angel Lucifer right there. Led Zeppelin, fallen. I mean, <laughs> lead is out of all the seven L, uh, metals because each planet is associated with a metal. You got Saturn is lead, Jupiter's uh, tin, um, Mars is iron, uh, Venus is um, copper, the moon is silver, and um, Mercury is quicksilver, and then you got the sun, which is gold. There's all the seven basic elements. Now, the reason they're attributed to each planet is because they do something different. Each one performs different tasks. And they correspond perfectly with each other. It's amazing. For instance, Mercury is messenger of the gods, right? Well, Mercury is Mercury, Quicksilver. It's a liquid metal. It is a feminine and masculine quality in one. Meaning it's a liquid, feminine, and it's a metal. Hard, masculine. That's a hermaphrodite, Hermes. Or an angel, or a messenger. That's why Mercury is always associated with a messenger. Now, silver is the moon. Silver is um, an element you can make mirrors with. It reflects light. Okay, And so silver reflects light. It's like the moon. It's a silvery moon. Silver, hello. And then you got gold. Gold is the sun. The element in the metal gold never oxidizes. It never rusts. It, it's always uh, rust-free, unlike the other metals. Okay, You understand? Like you get in the character. There's a story in, in, the, in each uh, thing that you see. There's some kind of... Uh, hit pass to it. There's this invisible spiritual story that is responsible for where it has ended up. Lead blocks light. You can't... Light cannot penetrate light. It's the most dense. He's blocking light, meaning he's the ruler of the, uh, you know, of the abyss, right? He's the ruler of hell. Well, hell is sealed. You cannot let uh, spiritual... or You cannot let anybody out or into it. It is... That's it, okay? It's a prison, a spiritual prison. And so it, it, that story and spiritual concept is right there in, in the planet Saturn. Okay? This, is the, this is the whole hermetic principle of correspondence. This is relationships. When you see relationships between everything, you detect a pattern, and then you can see how everything has got this rhythm to it. There's this flow that everything works organized. You, know, you can't see, but it's there. It's an organization. It's, a, it's like this beautiful orchestra playing a song together this if you want to know the truth if you want to get to god you've got to realize that first of all 
you probably best friends with his enemy. So he's not going to really reveal himself to you. Who's the enemy? Um, so we got the sun and the moon. The right path, righteousness, is humility. That's the T. The left is pride. Pride is, is the ego. That's the shadow self. That's not, that's not the real you. That is a, that's the lie, okay, that uh, you're born into, this kind of like curse of the flesh. And that's what happens when you have flesh. It just, it is a shadow of, and a copy, a reflection of the true you, which is of your spiritual body, which is connected to your, um, to your uh, intelligence, your conscious mind in the, in the pineal gland, your um, intellect, okay, your ego, your willpower, your, um, your, your conscious mind, but, and, and your logic and reasoning. But it's fueled by the, by the heart and soul. And the soul, in the center of your heart, that's your soul. Center of your mind right here, that's the pineal gland. That's the conscious mind, which is, that's what connects your physical mind and body to the spiritual body. Okay? Because your spiritual body is not driven by the mind, it's driven by the heart. Okay? The soul is what directs and navigates and tells your spiritual uh, body where to go. That's it. You think this mind is, is the real you. You know, that's all you are is this mind consciousness. No, that is really the shadow self of the spiritual um, uh, plane or, or dimension realm and the real you, which is driven by this. That's why it's so important to be humble. This can't do that at all. This can't. Yeah, consciousness is the shadow or reflection. It's the mind that you're seeing in effect of the spiritual, you know, uh, reason for you being moved, and that's your soul. Your soul moves your spiritual body. The right side, humility, and the left path, the right path, the crossroads, okay? You've got this crossroads that you choose. Oh, so humility is when you put yourself um, below God. This is all a gift. You did nothing to deserve this, right? Thank you, God, you know, because... You know, I didn't do anything. I don't do anything. I, I can work and make all this money and do whatever. It doesn't matter what I do. I could never repay this back. This is a gift. No, I, it's nothing I did to deserve this. And so that's the truth. And so that's why humility is so powerful. Because it's the, it's that you're being in alignment with exactly what you are and were made to be. If you are this guy, pride. You are sending yourself like, it's all because of me, I'm so great, you know, that's why people buy me shit, is because I'm so beautiful, or I'm so um, special, I'm a celebrity, just people love me, you know, no. Every time you ascend yourself like that, put yourself up higher, self selfish, you are going to fall really hard. Put yourself down below, being humble to God, give him praise and glory for all you get to experience. Thank you, Father, right? It's like you're loading up a spring. You know, a spring works, you put pressure on it. The further you go down, the higher you go up. It's ascending. Yeah, there's two paths you can go by. There's only two paths. Now, that's how these four dimensions work. You got one dimension, two dimension, and then you got up and down as a result. When you go the right path, you're righteous, you ascend up like a flower that is getting sunlight. The flower will always move and grow towards the sun to get the light. Okay, when you take the left path, when you put that flower in darkness at nighttime, it's cold. You see how much that flower shrivels up. Yeah, if you really know the enemy, um, know this uh, character, you've got to know his his numbers, his signature, what he does. By the fruits you shall know them. So if you know a few basic principles about him, you'll see him everywhere. All right, you'll know his number. You'll see him in nature, um, and in uh, chemistry, you'll see him in chemistry. You'll see him in concepts and princ principles. You'll see him in. I mean, it just is everywhere. I mean, there's always a story being told everywhere you look. And this story is an echo of the original, only true, real story that happened, which is the truth, the one story. What happened to make this shit? Heaven, hell, this place, earth, the fall of man, being here, the redemption, um, Adam and Eve, all of it. That's the true story that is the spiritual cause that made all this shit happen. Okay, it's just an echo. Everything you see is a reflection, it's an echo. If you look in the heavens and you see these constellations, especially the one Osiris. Osiris is one of seven of these heavenly heroes, conquering heroes, okay? You got Hercules, Perseus, Osiris, which is, you know, Orion, his belt and all that. The sons of God disobeyed him. 
he told him that if you transgress my word, I commanded you, you know, he commanded his angels to do a particular task. He says, if you're going to transgress my word, you're going to be locked up in the abyss or you can, in chains where you cannot loosen or move until the great uh, judgment. That's it. You're going to be in the abyss locked away. Okay. You know, he said that he, he would uh, give him a, a position at his right hand if they obeyed him, but they didn't. So those constellations you see, especially Osiris, Orion's belt, what you're seeing is one of these beings in chains in the, in the abyss. I'm telling you, that's what it is. They cannot move. They're stuck there. They're, they are angles of light that the pyramids in Egypt, for instance, you know that the pyramids in Giza correspond to Orion's belt. The beings that built those pyramids were highly intelligent, very powerful. All these structures all over the world, all the pyramids, right? All these all these old temples of uh, what they call pagan gods, pagan worship, they're always in the sacred geometric pattern everywhere you look. Why sacred geometry? Okay, here's something that's, that you really don't know. is because sacred geometry is a language of angels. The story of the fallen angels and the ones who had sex with women and the offspring of them were these men of renowned giants. You know, Genesis 6 talks about these beings came to earth uh, granted flesh bodies. Why? Because just after Adam fell and came to earth, God was sending them on a, basically a mission to help him out, uh, to assist him. Um, and they didn't like this. They were jealous. They couldn't stand Adam. So God granted them uh, flesh bodies. Okay, I don't know exactly why, but he gave them flesh, which is the water and earth element, on top of the fire and air elements, which they already naturally are. Air is communication, fire is spirit, or light, right? That's what they are. Chariots of fire, God's messengers. So those elements, that's what they do. And so when, once they were given this uh, gift, right away, these angels um, made a pact with each other. And they said that uh, they're going to transgress God's word. They're going to have sex and experience the flesh. Why? Because they couldn't control themselves. The flesh is so powerful. And it's such a... Um, with the stimulus of sex and drugs and drunkenness and all that crap, right? Well, they made a pact and said that they're going to do this, and they're all implicated, and they bound themselves to a mutual, uh, this, this contract, this agreement, that they're all knowingly going to do this, okay? All guilty. So what they had sex with women, all right? The offspring were huge. I mean, they just burst it out of the mother's belly, a lot of them. A lot of them died at childbirth, a lot of them came out. Not only did they have sex with women and have offspring that were two servings of air and fire, which is what? Spiritual willpower, right? And intellect, okay? But it was angelic power in a flesh body, just like Hulk and Thor. I mean, that's exactly what they were like. These are the beings that built these pyramids and temples, all based around sacred geometry. Why? Because their fathers were angels and their mothers were earth-born. Uh, just like the story of Perseus and Hercules, you know, the father, his father was Zeus, his mother was, you know, woman, whatever. These beings were incredibly intelligent and incredibly strong. They used to freaking eat people. They used to be gods. They used to be worshipped, okay? Um, and, uh, th and not only did the angels mix with women, they taught things that corrupted man completely, which is the art of war, putting uh, makeup on women to make them more seductive, teaching women how to give abortion, and teaching astrology, and amongst other things. Then they decided to mix themselves with animals. If you look at the Hindu gods, the, the, uh, you know, the, the elephants and the, and the monkeys that look like man, that's exactly what they did. They mixed, um, and genetically en engineered, they mixed with all this crap. They just made a friggin' mess of, of things. And they were pissed at Adam because they said, well, he transgressed your word and look what he did, you know. And God told him, he said, you know what, You're, if you had flesh, you would transgress. And just like Adam, but you'd do worse. And he was right. They did worse. They almost freaking destroyed the planet because of it. All right. That's the whole story of Noah. That's why he flooded this whole place. Okay. And so these uh, constellations, they were, they were revered by the people who built the pyramids. Why? Because that was their father's. Once their fathers, after what they, they did, what they did, um, God sent them to the abyss. 